Bună ziua! Eu sunt foarte București și să vă vedem în anul 2023. Hello and I'm really glad to see all of you in the new year 2023. I wanted to start this year on some high note and that's why I decided to start with Meze Advar. It's not a new model, it was released some time ago, but uh, it's a really great earphone, they still hold their positions well and there is no single reason uh, to not to talk about them. Really interesting model with deep roots of inspiration uh, in the Romanian folklore because Meze is a Romanian company. That's why I started uh, this video with uh, welcome in Romanian language. It was a bit uh, bad pronounced, of course, I'm sorry, but still worth trying. So, Meze, of course, is a well-established, well-known company and I like that they Uh, don't try to fill the market with dozens of models. They release like one or two, ma maximum three models per year, and all of them became uh, usually a really big success. So I've got two the new models. It's Advar, their new single dynamic offer, and in-ear monitors. And also for review, I've got uh, 109, uh, 109 or 109 uh, model, their new full-size uh, cans, also really interesting. And I've got uh, two premium cables for both of these models. And I think I will start with describing Advar in the stock form. And then uh, we'll make a video about 109. And then we'll do a separate video about upgrade cables. I think that will uh, make more value. So, about Advar, it's single dynamic model, just 10.2 mm dynamic driver with stainless steel housing with outstanding black chrome plating finish and, of course, with tons of attention to design, traditional for Meze. Their price is pretty high, they cost $700, but Taking into account the reputation of creators, it's still really interesting to see what they give us. So let's have a closer look. As you can see, box is nice, uh, cardboard inside, uh, and uh, that uh, signature pattern outside. Good combination of black and uh, gold, so strict and uh, looks uh, really well. And underneath the outer sleeve. We getting the inner box, uh, which way it's open. <laughs> yep, it's really tightly fitting lid, so it opens just upwards. And on the top you can instantly ad admire the beauty of uh, earphones. I really don't like this material, I don't like this pseudo velvet. But uh, in, for these uh, earphones it looks just okay. So let's take them out. Then goes some booklet and just pay attention at uh, polygraphic quality. So one of the best booklets I've seen. And also you, here is signature case. It definitely reminds more expensive full-size phones and inside of the case we'll get all the accessories. So stock cable, let's take it out, come on, sorry, they also made a really good velcro stripe that holds super tightly. Also. Unusual instrument for cleaning. I'm not sure what is this thing for, but uh, maybe in some cases it can be useful. Also, the most stylish MMCX removing tool, so you can <coughs> use it as a on your keychain. But uh, anyway, looks really great. And the set of tips. Basically, what I also like here, what I really glad to see in many models, actually, Meza decided to use final audio tips 
I already said that I like them really much and here they are. Full set with lot of different sizes, so you'll definitely find the ones that will fit you best. Actually, needless to say, the design is really great. G uh, really good combination of colors, main shell is made of uh, steel and it has that uh, ultra glossy black uh, chrome plating and they made some smart elements uh, of uh, copper. Uh, it, uh, here is the spout and this uh, interesting detail on the face plates. I'm not sure does it do something acoustically or just cool looking, but anyway it definitely looks attractive. They created small and uh, really convenient shell with proper fitting into ears. Spouts are average in length, but thanks to the proper size of this part they have slightly above average passive sound isolation, so it will reduce more outer noise. And additional vent hole is located on the rear side, so if wind will blow to your face uh, it won't do some uh, interference with the sound. Of course, uh, overall level of craftsmanship is absolutely outstanding, everything looks smooth and really nicely built, so I'm not, I'm not sure if I need to say anything else, but uh, you can see yourself that build quality is really nice, so I will just show it to you closer to convince. Of course there is a lid for holding the tips and protective grill, so I'm not sure that it's uh, necessary to say for this price tire, but anyway. Stock cable is made replaceable of course, and they used MMCX connectors. Here they have markings for the right and for the left, and also of course Right is marked with this uh, red stripe. Yeah, it's the right one. MMCX is really clicky, fits really well, and that's why you'll need that uh, additional uh, MMCX disconnector disconnecting tool. Stock cable is really good. It has ear hooks. It's soft enough to be comfortable, uh, and looks attractive, like traditional silver uh, spiral cable. Here is splitter with chin slider and underneath it goes four cables down to the regular 3.5 mm jack. But as I've said, Meza offers few options of replaceable cable for this model and in one of the next videos we'll talk about it. And of course about the sound, I don't know, did I need to say that sound is also great. It's typical for Meza, really coherent, really musical and well balanced. These earphones uh, don't try to overwhelm you with, um, uh, with micro contrast highlighting it. They don't try to boost uh, macro dynamics uh, to highlight bass too much, make some Sp uh, some spike in the upper mid area to make everything oversaturated with emotions. No, they just trying to play musically and uh, comfortably, maybe a bit relaxed, but not relaxed in terms of lacking details or smooth or soft, no, or lacking dynamics. No, it's just uh, that coherent uh, type of sound that uh, dynamic drivers are known for. So it's one of the best examples of uh, single dynamic driver models. But at the same time they sli still slightly boost uh, bass, but of course not too much and adds a bit of weight to the mid frequencies to make uh, instruments more full bodied and vocals more omnipresent. And uh, about the rest let's talk step by step. So. I spent uh, 60 hours burning them in, there were changes in sound, but they were really minor, so sound settled a little bit, became more refined. But if, you, uh, if you're going to buy them, don't spend time on burning them in, just uh, get them and start enjoying, so no, no need to spend additional like 50-60 hours without listening to these earphones, start enjoying them right now. More important is to find the pair of tips that will fit best to your ears. 
they won't be too loose but they don't uh, they shouldn't be too loose and they shouldn't be too tight fitting so there are a lot of uh, steps in terms of size find one that will fit you and base is deep uh, but it's not making highlight on the deeper layers of base it's present to build the foundation but this model won't try to like uh, uh, deliver skull crushing amounts of uh, deep base no instead main accent is made on mid base it's not big so it, it's a uh, model with good base with nice uh, quantity and great quality but it's not base head model uh, they have really good resolution on the low frequencies base uh, doesn't try to be fast as in balanced armature tunings but resolution is good and the saturation with uh, micro nuances is also really great giving instruments that uh, sense of additional realism like slightly exaggerating the realism it's a pleasant uh, experience but uh, slightly not natural but really enjoyable good balance between punch and weight so when necessary you'll get weighty bass when necessary they deliver nice punch so really universal low frequencies enjoyable with electronic music in case if uh, you don't want some really boosted bass of course and great with instruments and with realistic instruments uh, like bass guitar acoustic bass i don't know fortepiano and so on and the first example for the bass actually you know few reviews ago i used uh, red hot chili peppers as an example for bass and i like that idea not because they have like super realistic or super perfectly recorded bass but because the bass here in their tracks plays a really vital role and uh, some earphones uh, just lose it or uh, vice versa exaggerate it but uh, not all models really capable of delivering uh, bass guitar at necessary level of uh, quantity and quality to be fitting in the whole mix and uh, red hot chili peppers with this model definitely good example of coherence and balance so dark necessities bass guitar nice and no not this way let's go back second example for the bass it's yellow jungle bill and uh, it's typical yellow song with nice present bass but uh, not trying to overwhelm you with, uh, quality, with uh, quantity of bass but uh, instead you're getting a lot of 3d effects a uh, lot of small interesting fun uh, things they put in the, into this track and uh, Advar plays great uh, bass line and of course they are good in uh, building three-dimensional stage uh, to uh, represent all that effects that are present here and other non not so bassy samples mid frequencies continue the idea of bass actually you know what i also like that bass here is controlled really well and it totally stays in place when necessary it can give you body and uh, hit ha pretty hard but uh, control is good and it stays on its place in 99 percent of time and uh, of course uh, it's a single dynamic model so absolute coherence no driver overlaps or something like that and uh, mid frequencies have a good detailization but they are not focused on the micro contrast they have good emotions but they should be present in the record because model doesn't try to highlight emotions too much and uh, they have uh, really good weight distribution slight hint of additional weight but definitely not too much overall overall really musical representation in good uh, sense of this word because sometimes musical representation used for some over bloated bassy earphones it's definitely not this case it's just not trying to be super analytical or like super dynamic and super emotional so it's somewhere in between imaginary stage is really big both in width and in depth actually sometimes on some particular tracks they feel a bit diffused in terms of uh, localization of instruments but it's not uh, an often case it sometimes happens on just uh, some rare tracks 
in general good sense of three-dimensional positioning and also I like the depth layering, it's uh, done on a really good level. And uh, exa first example for the mid frequencies, it's Opus Burden, great, great, great ballad, performed really perfectly, I really like it and I recommend it many times before, I will recommend it many times uh, after. And here absolutely great, uh, great uh, matching of earphones to the track, they deliver nicely vocal, they deliver really well uh, instrumental part and also actually what is good for, about this model, they are not super critical for the quality of recording, they benefit from better records of course, but they won't uh, super highlight uh, small issues. Of course. Uh, you need to get better material to show their full potential, but if you have something so-so recorded in your media library, it will be okay. And classics of heavy metal, source of inspiration of many groups including Metallic, Metallica, Merciful Fate, uh, come to the Sabbath. And uh, they have really nice <laughs> high-pitched vocal that uh, gives them the signature sound and uh, they have a lot of things at the mid frequencies because they have nice sharp guitars with good definition and actually they care about re records quality a bit more than typical heavy metal groups of that period. I won't say that it's like perfect record but uh, still uh, stands out in a good uh, sense and these earphones uh, sound uh, pretty good with this group, they don't uh, make guitars over, uh, uh, over uh, sharp and at the same time they don't make over sound over soften. And actually treble to my ears is the best part here, it's really great in terms of extension and it's uh, really good, surprisingly good in terms of that small nuances and layering. So in terms of layering actually I'd say that it's flagship level earphones, I don't know how Mez achieved that, but they offer great layering and they offer really well balanced uh, treble, not too much, not too few and at the same time with really good attacks and decays, not like super fast attacks and decays like balanced armatures give sometimes, but uh, more realistic and uh, more natural and that gives you that sense of airness, gives you that uh, instrument saturation, especially timber rich instruments, actually they are really good in general in terms of timbers, it's super natural with the vast majority of instruments and that gives you good sense of realism and 3D positioning and stuff. And first example will be King Crimson, eyes wide open lot of different percussions and lot of uh, things that goes to the treble area, typical for the progressive uh, rock groups and uh, it's uh, nicely recorded and these earphones play it really well with a good sense of uh, maybe not live performance but good sense of re uh, real instruments. And another example, Mr. Jukes and no, no, probably Mr. Jukes, Maiden Voyage, really good compilation Blue Note reimagined and here you get interesting combination of trippy electronic music and uh, jazz and really fresh interesting approach and nicely recorded and uh, they have of course typically a lot of things that goes to the treble area and these earphones deliver it in the best possible way. So, to summarize about the sound, good musical representation, suiting many genres, unless you want some particular coloration, because it stands like in between of uh, them all, without uh, over overdoing something, but giving you nice musical representation. For me it's especially suiting like something with acoustic bass, and uh, something with good vocal, something that need good treble, like really good recorded audiophilic records, but of course it's not limited to, to these genres only. And of course uh, about the compressions, uh, there are a lot of uh, options in this price segment, but I will skip uh, 
hybrid models, uh, planar magnetic, uh, pure balanced armatures, because they are like different in terms of representation because of the nature of the drivers. And uh, just two models that are also pure dynamic drivers. First one is Dunu Zen, uh, first version, haven't heard second. Dunu Zen is, uh, has a bit more focus on the micro contrast because of that it sounds a bit less weighty and uh, more, uh, more lightweight, uh, but uh, for me this representation is a bit more musical and a bit more natural because here you'll get better body for instruments and that's uh, often important. Uh, especially when records are not really great. And uh, Dunu uh, FD7, my another favorite model, but Dunu like more aggressive, more natural, more trying to focus on the micro contrast and that they are just being more resolving and so on. So a le le less relaxed representation, more forward and also totally different from this one. Speaking about the sources, actually they require some good player, at least middle segment or better, even a bit more expensive and they scale well up to even uh, top of the line players, so they have a good potential for growth. Or if you want to use some portable dongles, it should be something like Luxury and Precision, uh, Kane Root 6. Uh, Low to Po S2 and all that other really good digital tonal converters of a higher segment. So, Meze Advar is great earphones, but I didn't expect anything else from Meze. So, thank you for listening, have a nice day. Multumask, Shi Lara Videri.